So the topic is simplifying a cos x plus b sin x. So this simplification is very important in circular functions. So now let fx to be a cos x plus b sin x. Now what I will do, I will take um, a squared plus b squared out from um, right hand side. So under that construction, you get a divided by a squared plus b squared square root. So this a squared plus b squared is taken out and it's going to be cancelled um, when you divide that. So, so then cos x comes here then plus b divided by a squared plus b squared square root you get sine x here. So this is our construction. Now if you want you can say this a squared plus b squared square root is uh, you can substitute I mean you can um, you can say it's r or something. Mm -hmm. Now we can think of one thing here. Suppose this is theta. So now if your um, opposite is a and adjacent is b so your hypotenuse would be a squared plus b squared square root. You can say this is r if you want. Right. So um, then if you consider this triangle, if your if your opposite is a, you can say this bit would be sine theta, and this bit would be cos theta. Now you have the flexibility to find a and b the way you want. Suppose you choose b to be opposite and a to be adjacent still you are still you are um, um, hypotenuse would be r now then if you choose this triangle this one would be um, cosine theta and this bit would be sine theta right so i would say this is my first um, construction and this is my second construction so both of these constructions are valid constructions so in general we had to understand how to play with these two basically so first of all i will go with the first construction what is the first construction the way you define a and b is the difference here right so in the first construction a would be your opposite side in the second construction b would be um, the opposite side so now if i go with the first construction construction number one construction number one then what i get is fx is equal to a squared plus b squared square root then here get sine theta cos x sine theta cos x you can see from the uh, construction number one that would be sine theta and then next you get cos theta sine x plus cos theta sine x now you can call this is r so you get r sine theta cos x cos theta sine x so this is a compounding angle right so you can say this is sine x plus theta so fx is equal to r sine x plus theta and this is um, your third equation this is the simplification so um, a cos x plus b sine x so so finally fx is equal to a cos x plus b sine x can be simplified into r sine x plus theta. 
Now, what is R here? R in terms of A and B, you can write A squared plus B squared square root. And theta would be, you can define theta uh, from this triangle, right angle triangle. So here, um, your opposite would be A and B, and this is A squared plus B squared. So you can find theta from this right angle triangle. So now we have to understand why this is important. Why this is important is because here you have cos and sine, two circular functions. Ultimately, you have reduced that into one circular function. So that is the most important thing. Two circular functions, you reduce it into one circular function. So that is the important thing that we see under this construction. So now construction number two. So construction number two. So in construction number two, what we got here is, um, okay, so that would be fx. We got a squared plus b squared square root. Now we'll go back to two. So we have cos theta, we replace sine theta by cos theta. So that would be uh, cos theta cos x plus sine theta sine x. So if you go back to the second construction, you can see cos theta goes with cos x, sine theta goes with sine x. And that would be the construction uh, number two. Now, a squared plus b squared square root is r. What is cos theta cos x sine theta sine x? Again, compound angle. That would be cosine x minus theta. x minus theta. So that is fx. So that is construction number two. And we have that. So now, that tells you, again, fx Originally, we had a cos x plus b sin x. That can be written in terms of r cos x minus theta. Now, why this is important? Now, finally, you have to simplify a cos x plus b sin x into one single circular function. So, that is the goal. So you fulfill the goal. Here you have cos x and sin x. You convert or you simplify it into one circular function, which is cos x. So that's the goal here. So however, we could construct this in two different ways. So I will summarize it. So this is the summary of this lesson. Um, fx is equal a cos x plus b sin x. Um, this can be simplified into r sine x plus theta or r cosine x minus theta. So both will work. So this depends on how you choose your a and b, right? So when we do questions, uh, both of these techniques will work. Okay, so in this question, we have to simplify. So the coefficient in front of uh, cos x would be 1 and um, you can say this is your a and this is your b, right? So your r would be a squared plus b squared square root and that would be um, 2, right? So, um, yeah. so now what you can do, so fx is equal to, you can take 2 out. So when you take 2 out, 1 divided by 2. So cos x minus square root 3 divided by 2 sine x, right? So here, now um, you can consider this to be sine alpha, and then you can consider this to be cos alpha, right? So sine alpha would be half cos alpha, would be minus square root 3 divided by 2. So now we have to understand 
and find what would be the alpha value first so in this case you have to see right so he has sign positive here and cos negative here sign positive cos negative this is the domain right so now h pi so what it would be so sine pi minus uh, you know sine uh, 30 would be sine yeah sine 30 would be uh, uh, half so it's going to be pi divided by 6 over here so sine pi minus pi divided by 6 is equal to sine pi divided by 6 it's half so alpha angle would be um, pi minus pi divided by 6 so we will check with the cos as well so cos pi minus pi divided by 6 and that would be um, negative cos pi divided by 6 so that would be negative square root 3 divided by 2 so so alpha we figured out so alpha we figured out to be pi minus pi divided by 6 so that's going to be pi pi divided by 6 so um, now if you have that this would be 2 sine alpha cos x um, plus cos alpha sine x so sine alpha cos x so this is going to be uh, x plus alpha so it's going to be 2 sine x plus alpha so alpha would be uh, 5 pi divided by 6 so this is going to be 2 sine x plus 5 pi divided by 6 and that would be the answer